I'm going to reveal which data extraction method will actually move the needle for your business, traditional OCR or the new wave of LLMs that everybody's talking about. I'll show you exactly when each method makes sense for real business scenarios, which one delivers better results when you're processing invoices, contracts and customer documents, as well as demonstrate the best LLM models that are crushing it right now for data extraction. We'll go through which is best for single use documents, complex multimodal documents with graphs and tables, as well as long form content or bulk extraction when you need to extract from lots of documents. And by the end of this, you'll know exactly which approach to use for your specific business needs and how much time and money each one can actually save you. So let's jump in and see which method you should use when. So if you want to follow along step by step with this workflow, you can grab the workflow from school.com slash scrapes, go into classroom, go into the resource hub and down in the operations section, there's OCR versus LLMs. You can download the workflow JSON directly from here. And then you're going to open up a new workflow inside NAN. And you're just going to load in that file exactly like you just downloaded. And that's going to open up all of the different notes as well as the HTTP connections that we set up to connect to the various different models. So today we're going to look through two of the most powerful OCR models that are available and also available for you to test for free, which are Mistral OCR and Quen 2.5 VL. We'll go over those in a second. And we're also going to be comparing that to two highly performing LLM models that have vision capabilities as well. And what we're going to do is run through several different use cases and see which one you should use when. So we've got four different test documents here. And if we come through and view them, the first one is a capture here. The second one is a handwritten or handwriting sample form. So lots of handwritten notes in here. The third one is our multimodal document. So it contains a chart with some text underneath. So we need to interpret that chart. And then finally, we're going to look at a research paper, which is a 29 page document with formulas, etc. in as well. And we're going to compare those OCR versus LLMs to see which ones you should use in which scenario. So first, let's cover quickly what is OCR. So OCR is optical character recognition, and it's effectively a vision model trained or a machine learning model trained to extract documents from images. So sc a scan like this and turn into a digital searchable document like on the right. So on the left hand side, we have a scanned document. On the right hand side, we have the digital version that an OCR model has created. And it does that by detecting characters and shapes. And it works out to or infers what letters are on the page and therefore reassembles them in this digital document. And the reason this is so powerful is because then we can actually search the document and store that data digitally versus having a paper trail of documents, which are hard to search and cost us a lot of time and money. Now, in the past, OCR has historically struggled with a few things. In particular, they've struggled with handwritten text where accuracy often drops below 80%, but also it struggles with complex layouts. So when there's a chart or a graph or a table, it often used to struggle to actually reassemble that information. But as the years have gone by, the last couple of years in particular, there's been some serious advancements in the OCR technology and OCR models able to process things much more cheaply. Besides that, we've also had the advancement of LLMs. So as the LLM models get more advanced and they have a vision model built into them, they are also able to reconstruct these documents. So the question here is which ones are better and which ones you should use for which specific business use cases. So we've chosen the models based on a recent study done by Get Omni, where they've compared different OCR or vision models together. And you can see that we've got Quen 2.5 VL here. We've got GPT 4.0. We've got Claude Sonnet 3.5. And we're actually going to use a lower down version of that. So Claude Opus, because it's actually good enough for the use case. And then we've also got things to consider like Gemini 2.5 Pro and then Mistral we will also be using in this. So this was a study where they took a document, performed OCR on it, and then evaluated it with a different LLM to work out the actual accuracy of return data. But what I want to show you in this video is the comparison of different document types using a traditional OCR and how much that will cost you versus an LLM and how much that's going to cost you as well. And like I mentioned, we're going to cover three different document types. The first is a single document, something like the capture. We're then going to go on to something with a graph or chart, and then we'll talk about long form content or bulk extraction when you have lots of documents and what is best for that. So let's get started immediately with the capture. And what we'll do is we'll run the capture through all four of these models and we'll do the same for the next after that. So we've connected up our files which are coming from Google Drive and being returned as binary files. And you can see our little capture image in here. And we've connected that to four different things here. The first is a Mistral OCR flow. So with Mistral, what we have to do is actually upload the file first, grab the URL of the uploaded file and then pass that into the Mistral OCR endpoint. So we upload the file to this endpoint here and you can see that returns effectively an ID. And this is just uploading 
routing it to their servers. We then grab the signed URL back from the ID, and that enables us to process this into an output, which we'll assess in a second. For Claude 3 Opus, through the traditional LLM nodes inside NAN, we can't actually upload our image documents. So what we're having to do is use a HTTP request to send that data to the Anthropic API. And we could do it in the same way that we've done Quen and actually go to the Open Router API. But what we've done is uploaded the image directly to Anthropic in this first node here into the Anthropic files. And then we're, what we're able to do is actually in our request or JSON body to Anthropic, we've said based on the image or the file ID that we've uploaded into the server, extract all text from this image. And we'll go through what that comes out in a second. GPT-40 is significantly easier inside NAN because we actually have an inbuilt OpenAI node. And we're literally able to choose the model here and just ask it to extract all text from the image. And it takes the binary file directly from the previous input. And then Quen put 2.5 VL. We actually have to host Quen 2.5 VL somewhere. So what we've done is just to make it easy and use an API, we found it on Open Router. And what this allows us to do is just to, in a similar way, upload the image to get it in a URL format and then pass that image URL to Open Router, which we're able to just specify the model. And this one is completely free as well. So you can see here, Quen 2.5 VL is a multimodal modal vision language model fine-tuned through reinforcement learning for enhanced mathematical reasoning, structured outputs, and visual problem-solving capabilities. So sounds exactly perfect for what we do. If we hit compare here, we can actually compare something that we're not going to use today, and we'll show you exactly why. And we'll go to Gemini 2.5 Pro, which you probably saw on the chart was actually the highest accuracy here. The reason that we're not going to use that is because at the moment is not practical for business use cases and large amounts of context or large amounts of images. And that's because we can use something like Quen 2.5 VL completely for free because it's hosted on Open Router, or we can self-host it ourselves. Here it's hosted by Alibaba. But something like Gemini 2.5 Pro, it's actually going to charge us 516 per thousand images. So actually, when you're uploading large amounts of documents, this could really get quite expensive workflow. And for a single document like a capture, let's see what the outputs were for Mistral OCR. First of all, so Mistral outputs it into this JSON here, and it will load up the binary data. But we can see from this mark down here that actually that's not read it correctly. So if we go back to the image, you can see this is C-I-C-L-I-Z-I-L, and captures are purposefully hard for these kind of models to read. And that's because they don't want bots completing captures on people's behalf. But actually, you can see from the Mistral output that it's completely misunderstood the image and not able to process that at all. We then have something like Quen 2.5L, which outputs the content in here. So the text in this image is, and then put C-H-I-Z. So again, it's not fully understood the image that we passed in. Now, if we go to Claude Opus and see what the result is there, it's put C-H-I-Z-I-L. So it's put C-H-I-Z-I-L. So significantly closer to the C-L-I-Z-I-L, but still not quite nailed it. And it's also told us our input tokens and our output tokens there. And then GPT-40, on the other hand, has actually nailed it, C-L-I-Z-I-L. So actually, in this case, the LLM was significantly better at reading a capture. Now, this is a very specific use case, but leads us down the point that actually, if you're doing a single document, you probably don't need a specific OCR model to actually process that. And that's not because they're going to be worse at detecting the characters on every single single page document, but it's probably that comes down to the cost. So if we go back to compare here and we actually compare GPT-40 to Claude Opus 3, for example, we can see that it's $3.61 for a thousand images. So if we do 3.61 over a thousand, that's a very, very small cost per image. Now, Claude 3 Opus is more expensive. And like we've seen, we can actually get something like Quen VL, Quen 2.5 VL completely for free if we self-host it or something like Mistral, which is $1 per thousand. But if we're just doing a single document, then perhaps actually putting it into an LLM would be better. And in this case, they've actually performed better and GPT-40 has given us the correct answer. Now let's move on to a second sample here, which you can see is a handwriting sample form. So like we said, traditionally OCRs have struggled with handwriting here. So it'd be interesting to pick out a few values and see if those have been detected correctly. And if we go back to the workflow, we've connected this up now and actually run those results. So let's have a look first at Mistral. And this is an example of a single page document again, but this is more about the format of the document and actually has handwriting. So if we open up the JSON here, we can see that it's broken it down into Markdown. And if I open that up further, I can see that it's got all the different titles here. So we've got name, date, city, state, zip, name, date, city, state, zip. So it's it's understood that this is some sort of graphical table of, of sorts and then started detailing these specific values. Now, I'm not going to go through every single value and understand if that's correct, but you can see it's picked up the correct format and produced the full context of this. And that being said, this is a single page document. So the full context is relatively easy to digest. Let's have a look at Claw 3 Opus, the LLM, and see if that's picked it up correctly. If we have a look at the JSON format, we've got name, date, city, state, zip. And then we can see that from this output format that it actually seems to 
have picked up a lot of the text, but it's significantly less than what we saw with the Mistral output, which kind of suggests to me that actually maybe some of the context is missing from this. I'm a quick round lazy of thanks, Quasi. Let's see if that says that in there. And I actually can't see that text at all in there. So I don't know if it's hallucinated when it's picked up those, but also some of these numbers, I want to double check. So we've got KFNJ, but all I can see is KVZIY. So you can see that actually it's given us the impression that it's extracted data correctly, but it's actually hallucinated and just given us completely different data apart from the obvious characters there. And this is an example of not, not being able to pick up the handwritten text very well. And this is even an example where it's got the digital text above it. We can see from Quen 2.5 VL that it's got name, date, city, state, zip again, and actually started putting out all of the context. But again, looks like a little bit shorter than the context that we had from Mistral, if we look back at that one. But in hindsight, actually, if I looked more closely, I can see that this is this Mistral output is actually the one that's incorrect. There's not this many numbers in a table, despite it picking up the right data structure. There's not this many numbers in the table here. So perhaps something like Quen 2.5 VL has worked better here. Let's see if it's picked up FUBJR at the end there, and 89285. It's got FUBJR and 89265, which I think was slightly off, but this looks like a six, so fairly close. So actually, Quen has outperformed here versus all the others, and it just goes to show that actually for your specific business documents, you need to check multiple models, and you're able to download a template like this and check multiple through the APIs to see which one works best for your specific document formats. But Quen 2.5 VL has outperformed here. If we go to GPT-40, we can actually see one of the potential dangers of using an LLM versus an OCR, which is actually content restrictions. So for some reason, it's deemed that it cannot assist with the extraction of the content from this document. Now we might be able to rerun this and actually try and extract again. But some complex formats, LLMs will actually just refuse to do that because they're not specialized to actually do the OCR extraction from documents. And you can see this time that we've run it again, it's actually given us an output here. But I can see from quickly skimming it, it's actually nearly got the last numbers that we just spoke about there, but actually missed the letters at the bottom. So it also hasn't extracted perfectly from there and it's probably hallucinated some letters, et cetera, as well. So I hope at this point you're getting an idea that actually none of these models are perfect and you need to work out which ones are best for your specific document case. Now, the next thing we'll talk about is multimodal where we have a graph. We'll also talk about how important it is to add context sometimes to get better outputs. So with the OCRs, you often aren't able to do this, but with the LLMs, you're able to add your own context to the documents in order to improve the retrieval. Now for the multimodal image that we've uploaded, we've uploaded an image of retention rates for a cohort uh, based on different geographies, genders, and race. And it has basically different data points in here. And we want to know if the OCR tools can extract information and infer information from that, not just the text, as well as the LLMs. Now, the powerful thing about LLMs here is we can add additional context and ask it to infer information about the text because the OCR tools are just going to pull information that they see on the text. So if we go back to the workflow, we can see for Mistral that we've got the output in here. And if we load up the binary uh, data inside here, we've got the retention rates for fall 2018 first year. So actually from an image, it has pulled all of text and this is probably correct. So let's look at 2018. Um, and this is actually representing it as a markdown table and saying that it is an image. So we could represent this as a table rather than as a bunch of markdown text if we wanted to. But let's just check uh, some figures here. So 2018, 90%, 82%. Now the difficulty here, I've just looked back at the image is there's a lot of different percentages. And when we're inferring information exactly like this, and it's just pulled directly into a text block. We're not able to actually relate those back to specific fields very easily. And it's pulled 90% and 82%, which could potentially be the two highest up here. So 90% and 82%. But like I said, that doesn't necessarily make it easy to infer information from the graph. It's just literally pulled from top down to the bottom, all of these figures potentially for us. So let's compare that to something like Claude 3 Opus. And if we look at the JSON output, it says the image shows retention rates for first year full-time college students in fall 2018 broken down by various demographic factors. So you can see immediately that because an LLM is able to contextualize it, it's able to pull more information. Retention rates are compared between students with no early college experience and those with early college experience. Correct. And let's just pick one data point. Females have higher retention rates than males, 84% versus 80% with early college. And it's picked up this bar here and this bar here with early college and compared things that aren't even next to each other. So you can see that LLM has really outperformed for this specific use case here. Let's see if GPT-40 did the same job. This one's done less of an analysis and inference. Ah, no, I stand correct. 
corrected, it has inferred things. Higher retention in early college. Students in early college programs consistently show higher retention rate across all categories compared to those not in early college. So this is the retention rate, early college versus no early college. So yes, they're all consistently higher. So it has inferred the overall messages here. So actually what I can see immediately is the LLM again has outperformed here. Let's look at Quen and we can see immediately it might have pulled some correct information. It's definitely trying to link early college and late, no early college to specific outputs, but the inference is much lower. This text summarizes the retention rates for different categories based on whether students participated in early college programs or not. So it did actually bring back the information, but this model is designed to pull back the text and characters from that information and not necessarily infer things about the meaning of it. So if you were to have a lot of charts and documents, you'd probably be better off, even though it's more expensive, to use a vision model inside an LLM rather than an OCR model to extract information. And then let's talk about the final use case, which is actually an OCR, which is actually a research paper. So this is a much longer document, 29 pages that includes lots of different formulas and mathematical expressions as well. But the main thing we're interested in here from a business point of view is not the mathematical expressions, it's can it pick up all of the context? So once we run this, we can see inside Mistral that if we open the output that actually, although it might not have picked up all of the mathematical functions entirely correctly, it seems to have pulled an extremely large amount of data, which gives me confidence that actually it's run through the full 29 pages and extracted what it thinks is correct. Now, that's not to say that some might be some might be hallucinated, but it has pulled 29 pages of information. So it has actually extracted really quickly as well, all of the information from there. We've then got Claude 3 Opus, which actually, if we go into the JSON here, by the way, I've had to add another node here to just change the document type. So in the request, instead of the type being image, I've changed this to a document type and I've also updated the model to Claude 3.5 Sonnet for this example because Claude 3 Opus doesn't take PDF documents as inputs. So Claude 3.5 Sonnet has taken the input and it has returned information, but you can see that with significantly more context, this has only returned a summary of the information and actually said, would you like me to elaborate on a particular aspect of the paper's content? Which suggests that actually if we were going to upload this kind of document to an LLM, we'd have to have really specific prompting, which actually then defeats the point of bulk uploads because we want it to just do all the work for us. And in this case, the OCR is significantly better because it extracts actually all of the information or what we think to be all of the information. We haven't run it through Quen 2.5 VL because again, it only takes an image input. Uh, I'm sure we could set it up as well easily to take a document output. We haven't done it here. And then GPT-40, actually the, the type of data that it accepts is only image types also through this node. So that has left us with two results. And actually, in this case, the OCR significantly outperforms. So let's talk quickly to round up about the real world cost estimates of using an OCR model versus an LLM. So typically, something like Mistral OCR, you're going to pay $0.001 per page. So if you're doing a lot of documents, say you're an invoice processing company, or just a company processing your own invoices, actually, you'd want to probably use still an OCR model versus actually GPT-40, where you approximately pay 10 times the amount per page. And that obviously varies depending on the model that you use, but it's approximately 10 times more expensive. So unless you need that additional context and it's a short amount of information, I would choose OCR every time. And that's going to you know, amount to a significant difference when you're processing a lot of pages per month. So $10 per month, for example, for OCR versus $100 to $500 a month. Significant difference in the real world business use case costs, although models are becoming cheaper. So this may change in the future. Some advantages of OCR is that actually they're specifically des designed with structured output preservation. So if you want to preserve the output, much like we saw up here in this example, if you want to preserve the visual output, then OCR is going to be significantly more effective than an LLM call. There are claims that you can get up to 95% accuracy with various OCRs, including Mistral as one of those. And actually they can process up to 2000 pages per minute. So super, super quick versus some of the more hefty LLM models. However, LLMs, as you saw, you can actually infer more information. So the ability to add context to certain graphs or charts or tables and get insights back is actually only possible using the LLM route rather than the OCR. So it gives us a more flexible route to actually give it custom instructions and custom information. If you're already using day-to-day, -day, like something like Claude or OpenAI, then actually this might be easier because if you're just uploading one document at a time, you're just able to upload it directly in the interface of the LLM rather than creating an NAN flow. And you can also combine the OCR or the vision there with other AI tasks in a single API call. So you can have multiple queries and put that in, whereas an OCR is specifically designed just to extract the information for a document.
So to round up, like for the different use cases, OCR is significantly more cost effective at pulling structured information from batches in at scale, whereas LLMs, it often makes more sense to use when you need to use OCR as part of a broader workflow or for complex document understanding. If you want to grab the template, then head to school.com slash scrapes. And please give this content a like if you enjoyed it, because it really helps me reach a wider audience. Thanks so much.